Hello, Worth Vegan here, back with another tutorial for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. This episode, I'm going to be talking to you about one of the most important things in Workers and Resources, and that is workers. I wanted to show you how to put together a small neighborhood of workers that you could use in any industry and how to fulfill all of the needs of those workers. So one of the first things workers need are education, both for babysitting and uh, to turn uneducated workers into educated workers. Uh, now, now these education buildings are only necessary if you have complex education chosen as one of your difficulty settings, but I normally play with complex education, so that's what I'm going to display here. So let's go ahead and get our uh, first educational buildings put together here. And we're just going to plop them down here. And we're going to put a school, both a school and a kindergarten. Now the kindergarten is used to basically babysit uh, your residents' uh, babies that are under six years old. And the school is to take uneducated people and make them ed give them a basic education. Now the the basic education will be for any adult people. It doesn't have to be just children. Any adults that are not educated can get a basic education from a skull. Now, the, um, the, the difference between experts and basic education is if they've been to a university. And uh, we're not going to go over that in this video, uh, but we will talk about the, uh, the other needs of your citizens, such as a grocery store. All right, so we got our school. We're going to back up a grocery store to that there and a small store which will provide clothing and uh, electronics to your residents. We will put in a nice little football ground here and a pub. Pub needs to be right next to the kindergarten as always or the school. After you've had a hard day at, at uh, school you want, what you want to do is go to the pub and get some brewskis. And a cinema, if you got the room, it's kind of big. Uh, if, I really recommend using just um, some of these monuments for culture. So we'll pop that down right there. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to connect all of this with our roads. There we go. Alright, so now, if we get our pathways. Now something to keep in mind when you're making your pathways is that people will not travel through a building to get to a pathway. Uh, pathways should be considered from either pathway to pathway or pathway to road, but they will not walk through buildings or bus stations and, and consider that a part of the pathway. So that's something to keep in mind and something I struggled with a little bit when I first uh, started playing and that's, that's why I'm bringing that up. But uh, th this is kind of a hot mess. But uh, you get the idea of having all of your, your buildings connected. Now, this, this would provide just about everything your citizens would need as far as uh, culture, food, uh, education, and such. Now, for our residential buildings, we could put in one building here. Let's put in one building of the biggest prefab we got. Let's put in the building of 189 here. It's a nice big building. And we are going to pop that down right here. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and auto import uh, citizens for this one building here. But I'm going to show you what we can do for more workers once this gets built. All right. So we got 132 out of 189 workers here. So what I like to do is if you start a map that has the, uh, the villages in it, you can come over to one of these villages, grab the villagers from there, and bring them over to work in your new city. So we can relocate up to 10 citizens or five experts to our new building. So I'll go ahead and fill it up with all of our people there. So now they should all go to the, to the uh, appropriate places um, Except they can't get to the kindergarten, apparently, because I failed, completely failed in my 
making uh, the uh, paths over here. I don't know why it's being so stubborn. There we go. Now they should be able to reach it. They should be able to reach the kindergarten as well. Okay. So now all these people need are power and a job. Uh, everything else, they are, they're pretty much happy with all of their other items. Now we have staff for the school. We got some teachers. And we can go ahead and build another residential building right next to it. Of the same size, same type. But we're going to get citizens. We're not going to get citizens from that. We're just going to let it build uh, the building. And we'll transport citizens in from other parts of our Soviet Republic. I'm going to go ahead and put a nice pathway there. And we will put in our other pathway from him to him. And from him up to there. And then these guys can all travel just like so and they have they can get get to all of their their needs now <clears throat> what we can do is come back over here to Lessie and see if we got some more buildings over here yes we do okay so this guy has no workers so we're gonna go ahead and plop in some workers from Lessie here and Plop them on in there and see now we have additional workers. So this is 85 workers and 188 workers. So we got about uh, 260, 270 workers. So now they, we need a job for these. So one of the industries you can do from the beginning that I like to do is food. And I'll do a whole nother tutorial on starting industries. But for this uh, example, we're just going to put together a little food factory here and we will put it on the other side of these workers so that they can just walk to it. Now this is not the ideal placement of of, of the, the city at all, but uh, this is just for an example. Uh, but I want to put them within walking range of this factory. So I'm going to plop this factory down right there and I'm going to go ahead and put a nice road. Like I said, this is not the ideal placement of buildings at all. This is just showing you how to provide workers to your industries. So now these guys, once this building is complete, will come to work at this factory. And we can actually come in here and set and tell them where they should work. So if we want some of them to work at the store and some of them work at the school, we can just tell them or we can let them find their own way, but de depending on what your situation is, you may want to assign them uh, as workers to a building. But see, now we have um, uh, all of our workers are walking to work here. They're coming on in. We need to buy some resources since we don't, we haven't grown any crops yet, but crops are pretty cheap for starting out. So we'll go ahead and buy them. We'll use dollars for now. Why not? And you can see they will start producing if they had electricity. All right, so now that we have power to our factory, we have workers coming in, uh, and we are buying crops to produce food. Now we can use that food to supply our own stores, or we can ship it out to this custom border house here for 120 rubles per food, and we're buying crops at 16, so we'd be making a profit just on this little factory here. Now the factory can use up to 36 or up to 170 workers, and we have uh, roughly 270. So, um, in order to provide enough workers for a factory, you need to have enough workers um, for each shift, each eight-hour shift. And the way to do that is you basically say, well, if this factory needs 170 workers, I need three times that in order to provide enough workforce for this factory. So I really need 510 workers to work at this factory. So in order to do that, let's plop down a few more residential buildings. Now I went ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and buy some uh, immigrants um, because they will go to school and become basic educated uh, normally, like I said, you would want 
to either naturally grow these these populations or you would want to uh, import them from your villages instead of just buying them like this but uh, just for the purpose of this video now we have lots of workers uh, lots of people going to school and they should all be able to make it to all of the resources I believe yes they they can they can and so now but these guys I don't think they can walk all the way down here to work they, they won't walk that far so we're gonna have to provide transport for them and the way you do that is with a bus station so we're just gonna put a small bus platform here again this is not the ideal layout this is just a quick demonstration of how to get workers to where you need them to go so these guys uh, are all gonna go to this bus station here so we need to buy a bus to take them to work so we're gonna go ahead and grab this bus we're gonna say go to this bus station go to this factory and deliver your workers alright so everybody else can get to everywhere they need to go and the guys who can't walk to work will come to this bus station they will I'm gonna tell both of those guys to come to the bus station for work and then all of my workers will come to this bus platform and then the bus will take the people to the factory and we should get lots of food being produced now of course we've already filled up all of our storage um, in the factory so I'm gonna go ahead and plop in another little warehouse here and that will keep our production going like so just like so all right so now we're gonna start storing food and as we produce food here we're gonna get more and more workers and the uh, our food production will continue to rise and we can start selling our food using a covered hole truck let's see which one can take the most crops here let's see let's go and get a 10 crop 10 tons of crops he's gonna come here he's gonna pick up crops and then take them to the custom house and sell them all right so we're gonna load up not crops excuse me food and then he's gonna unload the food like so there we go and so now this little community here is going to come to work produce food the excess food will be shipped to the warehouse and then shipped out to get more uh, rubles so you can see we got a our first load of crops was sold and we're gonna start making money now again this is not the ideal setup up setup of a neighborhood but this gives you an idea of everything that you would need for your uh, residents to not only be happy and productive but to get around and to be assigned to work once you get these basic setups uh, provided you can go ahead and give a couple more things that uh, your people will will be needing uh, one of that is a hospital so your people always require medical care and a fire department because without those things they will not be happy now see I've now assigned 50% of the people in this building to go to the factory and 50% to go to the hospital to work so that uh, our people will have health care now <clears throat> in this example I turned off fires so we can't build a fire department but um, you'd also want to provide a fire department for your uh, community as well so this is a pretty self-sufficient little community as far as workers go we've got plenty of work plenty of workers and lots of things that people can do uh, you can see that the people in this building are having trouble getting to the stores and so I need to upgrade my footpath a little bit here so that people from this neighborhood can also get over to their respective 
facilities. So now the people who say they can't get to the food or the hospital or sports or any of those other things, they should now all be able to get to all the different locations due to the footpaths and the roads. One thing to keep in mind when using buses to transport people from bus stops is that if the bus ride is too far, or train ride for that matter, then the people will eventually disappear off of that bus and they will no longer uh, be available <laughs> whenever they get there to go to, to work. So that's something to keep in mind also uh, when you're designing your bus routes and your residential areas is if they're too far from, from the uh, places that they're going, they will just disappear uh, before they ever even get to work or to what other location that you want them to go to. So that's something to keep in mind and be aware of as well uh, when you're constructing your routes is the distance from those locations to other locations. Very important. One other thing to keep in mind is if you build an empty building, as your uh, residents continue to uh, have adult children, those adult children will eventually move out and populate this building over here. So right now, no one lives here, but I've created this empty building so that as people uh, grow up and move out of their parents' homes, they will, um, they will just move into this building. And you can see that uh, they, they can walk to work and everybody should be happy. Uh, they've got all their, their, their stuff. Now, sometimes it'll say, you know, they don't have access to this or that, even though they have uh, access to it. <laughs> but uh, sometimes if they go there and there are not workers there, or if uh, there's more people than there are workers at that facility, then uh, you might run into a problem. But for the most part, people are able to uh, access all of the uh all of the facilities here now that there's no teachers in this in this place here so i need to get some of my educated workers to work at the school which place has educated workers this this guy i think had a few educated workers yeah so i have him work at the school just about 33 percent so we should get some workers in there as you can see that uh, i got my trucks hauling food away from the factory i've got three trucks doing that i've got one truck moving product from the factory to the shop and for the most part this little neighborhood here will start making money even though we're buying crops so you know we could do something like plant some uh, farms out here to provide food for this factory and it would make it even more efficient but just as a this is a good little example of how to manage workers all of these workers will populate both this factory and all the support services so i hope this video was helpful and stay tuned for more tutorials on Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic.